Hey guys, 5-9 Gaming here. I am Goresh, joined by Sunblade, and today we are going to go through the top 10 summonable LRs in Dokkan Battle, and for this list specifically, we are excluding Easy A LRs. So, you know, no Broly, no Goku and Frieza, none of those. Um, so again, this is a top 10 list. We have one honorable mention to go through as well before we jump into the actual top 10. Anything, somebody you want to quickly mention before we jump in, or do you just want to get straight into it? Um, so yeah, one more thing. I already said this uh, during the Easy A tier list, but uh, we are looking at them at a 100% in the hidden potential system, and yeah, there are multiple factors like leader skill, link set, and yeah, the whole passive. You know the deal. So check out the the uh, earlier tier lists, and let's get this started. Yeah, and as always, tier lists are always very subjective. So if you guys have different opinions than us, which is probably going to happen, right? We're not always perfect here. Uh, let us know down below in the comments if you agree or disagree with the placements of any specific units on this list. I think there are some units that can be higher, some units that can be lower, and you can sort of, you know, pick and choose which units you think deserve to be higher or lower. So, we're going to quickly jump into the honorable mention of the list here, which is LR Physical Angel Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta. So this unit released back during the worldwide celebration last year as the sum, uh, legendary summon unit, right, in part two. Mm -hmm. And uh, this unit is pretty good. I think the one issue that he has and the reason why he wasn't able to make the cut into the top 10 was, for me, he's very reliant on on uh, the, having a support unit as well as unit that links super well key-wise with him. Because for me, I use him a decent amount and he is a unit that is always struggling for key. Right, I absolutely agree, even though the link update helped him a little bit because I think Royal Lineage gives two key on level 10, so that's uh, that's a little bit of a help, but uh, yeah, Goresh is right, uh, he only works very well with the, with the Margin Boost Saga Goku unit, and yeah, that right. limits him a little bit, so, or well, that limits him quite harshly, so yeah, I agree with that pick on, well, number 11 here. Yeah, because he only has one key link, which you just mentioned is Royal Lineage. So, two key, and then other than that, he's not getting any key. I guess Golden Warrior, I guess, but that's only one key. And you... So he's going to be three mm -hmm. key from his links, and that's it, right? So in order to get his Ultra Super Attack, you need an extra nine key, which is not very easy to get. The one thing I will say is that his active skill is pretty good. Um, but again, you need that uh, the Goku with the Majin Buu Saga category on the on the uh, rotation, right? For that right. to get that to activate, so it's kind of specific. Um, all right, so that's uh, my, uh, the uh, Vegeta at the honorable mention slot. So let's start with the actual list here. Let's go in with number 10. Now, this might be a little bit of a surprise to a lot of people. I've seen <laughs> this unit not necessarily get as much uh, spotlight as I would have expected them to get. But we are uh, starting the list at number 10 with LR Physical Blue Goku and Vegeta, the unit that released last year for the Tanabata celebration on JP pretty much exactly one year ago. Um, so for me, uh, this unit has been a little bit underrepresented, I think, by a lot of people in the community. They, they look at this unit, they, they look at his defense, they look at his offense, and they don't really know where to place them. I think for me, uh, the reason why they're at number 10 and not higher on the list is because they are, again, dependent on rainbow orbs. And uh, there aren't that many solid options for them in terms of rainbow orb changers, but now with the tech Gogeta out, they actually make a solid partner with the Goku and Vegeta here. So. Um, I don't know if you want to harp in on anything else here, but the one other thing I will mention about them is defensively, they're actually quite good. Uh, they, they believe they greatly raise their attack and defense for one turn on super attack. So even though they have like 130k, 140k defense, they're going to be at over 200k defense once they super, which is definitely sufficient. They're lowering attack. Their, you know, normal attacks are actually hit decently hard if you get enough rainbow orbs for them to be able to crit on those normal attacks. So they're doing a lot of damage. And I don't think people realize really how much damage they're doing with those normals factored in as well. So, Yes, I agree. So they do their first um, super attack and then you can get some additional uh, normal attacks actually. And those additional normal attacks are very important because they give you actually a higher chance to get a hint potential super attack. And that's right. why they potentially do so much damage. And for me, like maybe you remember on, on Twitter I said that I underestimated in this unit and I... Um, this is right. Uh, the the universe. Um, oh well, no. The, oh well, yes. The universe seven LRs um, actually helped them out. Um, they have even better linking partners than before, and their active skill is really easy to trigger. But you have to finish off the the enemy, and 
the categories are fine too. All Out Struggle is a good category now. Joint Force is playable. And yeah, the other, other categories like Pure Saiyans, um, they work very well there thanks to Tech Gogeta and even now Super Saiyan 3 Goku. So yeah, fantastic unit. Very hard hitter unit. Yeah, and that's a good point to make. One thing you guys will notice as we go through this list is that a lot of the units on here, I think the last list we did was before 2021. I think it was the end of 2020 is when we did our last yes. LR, summonable LR list. A lot of these units that are part of the Universe 7 team might seem a little bit higher on the list than they were before. And the reason is because obviously the anniversary massively buffed that team, which is going to be able to help those LRs that are on that category, the Universe 7 team, the Universe Survival Saga team. So that's the reason why that, that change occurred there. Um, all right, I think we will move on to number nine on the list, which is Tech Full Power Jiren. Now, Tech Full Power Jiren was a unit that I think in the prior list, he was in the top five. So he goes from not, uh, top five to number nine here on this list. And the reason why is because from his time when he released until now, he doesn't, I mean, he doesn't really gain that much extra value in terms of the units that he's able to link with that came out recently. I guess he works decently well with Evolution Blue Vegeta, decently well with the HLUI Goku. But I think if you're going to be running Jiren, you mostly want to run him alongside Topo or the Int Topo and Pride Troopers, the STR EZA Topo. So those Universe 11 units are what you want to be using alongside Jiren. And that's pretty much his like where he where he's at his best. So he's been at his best pretty much. They released him alongside that STR EZA Topo for a reason, right? They're, they're meant to be ran together. Mm -hmm. um, Topo is able to trigger his super effective parts of his passive just by being linked up with each other, right? Um, and so I think already he was super powerful when he released, but he hasn't really gotten better since he came out. But he, I mean, obviously still very strong, which is why he's at number nine here. Yes. So I think that the release of the anniversary LRs quote unquote hurt him a little bit because you rather want to run them instead of him. Uh, that's how I personally feel. So I think his position at number nine is completely justified here. Still very strong. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I will say too is, um, with these extreme super battle road stages coming out, the category ones, you are able to see his active skill actually, you know, activate a decent amount of times, which I think is very par powerful. Once you get that active skill off with this Jiren, you pretty much win the fight. Um, so that's a really, really nice point about him. And then his later skill is really good as well, which you can't really say for a lot of other, you know, gold coin summonable LRs. So. That is Tech Jiren. Um, at number eight, we have STR UI Goku. Now, STR UI Goku is a unit that I would have argued back before the uh, year six anniversary was probably just not as good, or not as powerful, not as effective as Tech Jiren. But now, this is an example of what we were mentioning before. We have this Goku above Jiren simply because of the fact that he received a massive buff because of the six-year anniversary introducing the AGL UI Goku, we have all the fantastic support units releasing, like the uh, physical UI Goku, who you can put on the same team now with the same name update. You have the Tech Master Roshi and TN. So all these units are able to support him and allow him to be as good as he can be is why uh, I, I think he deserves a place at number eight on this list. He's not going to do as much damage as Tech Jiren is. There's no way. Tech Jiren's going to do way more damage than him. But as a unit that's able to jump into that number one slot, tank everything dodge everything like he, he'll be be more than effective for you on your universe 17 yeah i i cannot add anything more to that uh Gorosh just took it all away um yeah that's <laughs> it <laughs> all right so that is the stru i go quit number eight at number seven this might be a little bit of a surprise to a lot of people um considering this was my number one unit on the prior list that we did mm. we have lrstr team turles so Number seven is a little bit low. I think a lot of people might agree with that. But um, the reason why I think SDR uh, Turles drops all the way to number seven here is because there's just, he doesn't have a very competent partner. I mean, I guess you could technically say the TUR of this LR is a good partner for him or the AGL Turles is a good partner for him. But try running those units in like extremes through Battle Road and then get back to me and tell me how it goes because it's not... Uh, it's not really going to work out as well as you think. Um, 
once the AGL Turles gets an easy A, which I think is probably going to happen relatively soon, he's not that deep into the category meta in terms of release date. Once that guy gets his easy A, like, this guy's going to shoot all the way back up to, like, number four or something on this list, or even maybe higher than that. Um, his damage is still crazy, right? His um, active skill, I think, is actually not that bad to get. And the one thing that I think a lot of people overlook with this Turles is they're looking at his attack stat and they're like, okay, how is this guy better than like someone like Tech Jiren? Because they're putting up similar numbers. He can be super effective against all types, but you have to fulfill his condition of having 24 key first. The one thing people forget is that he's supporting the rotation, right? He's supporting the Terrifying Conquerors units on rotation. So not only is his attack stat what he's putting out, he's also helping his allies get key, helping his allies do more damage, have more defense. So the utility that he provides, I think, is what pushes him uh, above someone like Tech Jiren. But his partners and his linking uh, allies on his teams that he's available to be used on, I think, just are not as as good as they should be to bring out his full power, right? With the other Terrellises, he needs, like, a met, what is it, like, Destroyer of the Universe is the one link you want to have with him. Yeah, right. Which you can't get active without other Terrellises, so... I don't know. How, how, do you, how do you see this guy now as opposed to when he came out? Um, he's still really, really powerful, but we got a lot of LRs <laughs> this year, and you already laid it out. What has to happen is that he has to become actually the weaker unit on a rotation, so we get like a mega Turles, like a super powerful, easy A AGL Turles, um, in order to make him very, very relevant again. Um, yeah, Movie Boss has just got a new LR, and this LR doesn't work very well with STR Turles, so I feel that he's starting to be pushed back a little bit. But yeah, once once we get a, the AGL Turles easy A, who will be absolutely incredible, um, this LR will be yeah at the top again. Yeah, yeah. I think one other thing to mention about this Turles, uh, just one advantage that he has over Jiren, which kind of goes hand in hand with his support capabilities, is that he's actually a really good floater. Um, you can throw him on like the Space Traveling Warrior team, the Terrifying Conqueror team with the STR Cooler, STR Bojack. And you can float him off, and he'll be supporting the team. He'll be decent in slot three. I mean, he has tons of defense, so he'll be good there. Um, Jiren wants to get hit first, so that he builds up his key, right? That's that's sort of what he wants to do. So again, a lot of people directly compare this Turles to Tech Jiren. And I just find so many positives when I'm talking about Turles as opposed to Jiren that I think, I, for me, I just always like this Turles better. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's our justification for him being at slot seven. I understand if a lot of you want to put him higher, which I definitely wouldn't disagree with. I just think the lack of like a solid Turles linking partner to activate those really powerful specific Turles links are what holds him back a little bit. Yeah, and just because right. he's number seven, that doesn't mean that he is bad. The other units are yeah. just so incredible, so we had to put him there. Uh, that's right. very, very important. But yeah, let's move on. Okay, so number six <clears throat> sort of did a, a switch from what we had on the previous list here, we have mm -hmm. physical boo tanks, who it's kind of interesting because I actually, we, we created the first iteration of this list before the LR Super Janemba came out. And boo tanks was like nine or something, right? He was like nine or eight or something like that. He was, he was below Turles. And the reason why we had him so low on that first iteration of the list was because he had really no units that came out since he released to help him at all. Right, Majin Buu units, I would say, like powerful versions of Majin Buu units are not very common. They don't release very often. So him having all these Majin Buu specific links, you know, Majin, uh, the like Metamorphosis, Wall Standing Tall, Majin, like those links that are typically, you get those activated by linking him alongside a Majin Buu unit. We didn't get another powerful Majin Buu unit at all since he came out. And for that reason, he didn't really, you know, become better at all. He sort of just remained as good as he was when he came out. And I think he was probably just a little bit less good as, than Turles was. But now we have Super Janemba, who we'll talk about in a little bit. But they share, what is it, five links with each other? So yes, right. that rotation, not only is that good for the, for the boot tanks, but it also helps a unit like Super Janemba out a lot. <clears throat> so I think... The release of Super Janemba is what pushes his boot tanks up on this list a little bit. And um, I assume once we start getting more powerful Majin Buu units, like maybe an LR Kid Buu at some point, he will shoot even higher up on this list. But uh, what, are you, what are your thoughts on this boot tanks right now? Yeah, so um, yeah, we actually talked about that and it was pretty clear to me that we had to quote unquote buff um, Super Buu here. Uh, in the past, he only his only great linking partners were like 
well, quote unquote, the great link bars like Int Easy A, Buhan, or SCR Transforming Super Boo, which are not great, to be honest. Because the Int Kid Boo Easy A, you would like to run him with the Tech Super Boo. Uh, so, and now the time has come where he is actually the quote unquote weaker unit on rotation, the same scenario laid out with the Tolises, and it's incredible. Both are extreme physic, that's great. Five links are shared. Metamorphosis, incredibly powerful link. And yeah, this, this boot tanks recovers HP every turn, man. This rotation is just insane, so we had to put him there at number six. And so there we go with physical boot tanks at number six. All right, so now we're getting into the top five here. This is where things are going to get potentially a little bit more controversial. You can, again, let us know down below if you agree or disagree with these top five placements. But number five, we have physical super Janemba. Now, me personally, I am a global player, so I do not have first-hand experience using this Janemba, but, uh, you know, Sunblade here is, in, is a JP player. Yes. I assume you uh, have a little bit of um, experience using him, if not just for a friend unit. So what are your what are your overall thoughts on this Janemba, and why is he so good? Okay, so first off, um, I really like that Akatsuki gave him a 150% leader skill with Q plus 4. Um, that's... Very, very good, especially for movie bosses. A Corrode Buddy in mind, that's kind of a wonky um, team, but you can now mix movie bosses with units like Goku Black. Uh, for example, the AGL Goku Black. Um, maybe you want him as a support unit, I don't know. But yeah, nonetheless, it's great because like um, Broly as a movie boss leader, well, yeah, he doesn't work very well with units like Janemba, but now this problem is solved. And other than that, the passive skill, um, he's a great defensive wall. In longer events, he really builds up his stats. Um, yeah, Akatsuki, like, shortly before he released, buffed his leader skill from additional key plus uh, one to key plus two, and that's a really big factor here. So in a couple of turns, he becomes like a monster. He guards, that's the first LR that guards, right, Gurish? I believe um, so, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's one thing. And uh, yeah, he's he's basically good everywhere. His his damage might lack a bit, especially at 55% uh, at, at early turns, like turn 1, turn 3. But uh, yeah, man, his link sets, big bad bosses, definitely level that up to level 10. 25% attack and defense. Uh, shocking speed, man, Morphosis, brutal beatdown, fear and faith, fierce battle, legendary power, amazing link set. Um, I like his rage mechanic too. It can be activated when HP is 66% 60, or more, starting from a 6 turn. You can see that in longer events that works, and he has a additional key mechanic too. Um, kind of a whole package, uh, definitely a monster defensive wise, uh, great offensive wise. Um, could be better though, but still, completely justified at number 5. Um, yeah. And last but not least, I totally forgot about that. His defensive set is close to 15,000. So <laughs> that's <laughs> insane for an LR. And yeah, please, people, do not just look at the at the attack set when the when the units attack. Uh, that's not everything. Man, he's just great. But yeah, his yep. banner shafted me beyond belief. So yeah. No. <laughs> um, I, I feel for me, when I look at units in this game, like the way that they typically release units is there's sort of like a seesaw effect where it's like the more they buff the defense end of the unit the lower the attack that's going to go and it's sort mm -hmm. of like seesaws back and forth where you have units very rarely that can sort of have a balanced out seesaw like you know we'll take a look at it in number one but with this janemba i think using that same seesaw analogy this janemba's defense is so high and the one weak area you could argue about him is his uh, attack stats starting out in those first like two or three turns are not that impressive. But more so than the attack stats, the reason why those attack stats are a lot of times so unimpressive is because his key. And I feel like that's the main issue this unit has is his key starting out on turn like one, two, and three can be an issue. Um, so if you don't have units that are directly linking up as well as you would like, like it's an example of why that Buhan is so high on the list now at number six, because he does link very well with the Shinemba. But if you, again, go into Super Battle Road, turn one, you have the Shinemba on rotation, and you get very unlucky, you have terrible rotation starting out, this Shinemba will look awful, because he needs to be set up in a way that, you know, provides him enough support to get those decent attack stats. But, on the other hand, defensively, he'll be completely fine. So that's why I think... You know, even though you get unlucky with rotations, you don't have things set up the way you want them to be. Um, his attacks aren't that great. He'll still be able to hold his own defensively, which to me is is pretty pretty impressive about him. The one thing also I would I would like have liked to see a little bit more is maybe just better super attack effects because they pretty much are useless. But uh, mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, one thing I... Well, I didn't forget that, but he has a high chance of nullifying enemy key blast attacks, but we'll get to that when we talk about... Well, number four, so uh, yeah, I want to save that for later. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> number four, we have Tech Super Gogeta, also known as the Tech Angel Goku and Angel Vegeta, mm -hmm. who are the most recent Dokkan Festival art to come out in JP for the Tanabata Celebration. They came out right before this Janemba, sort of go, to go hand in hand with the Janemba, right? It's from the Fusion Reborn movie. Yes. Um, another unit that is, for now, a JP-only unit, so I will let you discuss mm. what you think are their strong points and weak points. Okay, so uh, first off, this is pretty much a timeless unit. Um, well, pre-transformation or pre-fusion, this unit is very, very similar to the STR Goku and Vegeta, who um, transform or, well, fuses into STR Super Vegito. But uh, yeah, this unit creates rainbow key spheres. Um, well, it's a high chance, 50%, but yeah, it's a coin flip. It works very often and uh, their leader skill are re really, really good. Time limit and connected hope. Yeah, the rest is pretty much the same. Super attacks and, and links, they link up perfectly with SCR Goku and Vegeta. This is, the, this could be actually the best rotation in the game, Tech Gogeta and SCR Vegito. But, uh, yeah, Goresh said weaknesses too, so when they actually transform, their transforming condition over their actor skill is, is completely fine to me, but sometimes you can fall below 70%. But when they are fused, their damage is a little bit lacking, and what annoys me the most, and I teased that a little bit when I talked about Janemba, is his last part of the passive nullifies enemies melee super attack within the same turn when performing an ultra super attack on that enemy, so that's... Like, I, I imagine, like, Akatsuki celebrating this part of the pass. I'm like, oh my god, this is mind-boggling. We have to make the rest of the kid, like, not that impressive. But this part of the pass just sucks. Because it never happens. You have to, like, super that enemy. This enemy has to do a melee super attack. And, yeah, key-based super attacks are much more frequent in Dokkan, especially on Super Battle Road. But yeah, the rest of the kit is just crazy. One, attack and defense 150%, they recover 30% HP, they create uh, rainbow key spheres that's guaranteed. Um, yeah, they are super effective against all types, they foresee enemy super attacks, so that's great. But the damage, like the, the, the um, attack set, is not that like super incredible. But otherwise, really, really, really great units. Deserve number four, but yeah, with the stupid gimmick at the end. Janimbas is so much better because he has a high chance of nullifying enemies' key blast super attack. Uh, and yeah, you don't have to super <laughs> the enemy beforehand. It happens every time, like, when you're lucky. So, uh, yeah. What do you think about him without using him? <laughs> so, I actually don't think that last part of his passive is that bad, the nullification. And the reason okay. why I don't think it's that okay. bad is because I don't believe that they put that in. And then they like were like, oh, okay, this is so powerful that we're gonna have to like nerf other parts of his passive. I think it's just a little additional thing that they just put on there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it's just like I, th I think he's like even without that part of his passive, you wouldn't really notice a difference with this unit, right? He would still be yes. just as good. Okay, yeah, um, that's right. Uh, the one other thing I will talk about with that nullification thing is because he can see enemy super attacks. If you're going up against an enemy that does a, a melee based attack, you can easily get that off, right? Because you see what the super attack is, you can just put them in the slot where they're going to attack you, and then you can nullify it. Whereas with Janemba, you don't know where the super's coming, so you have to be lucky with where you put Janemba, and then hopefully you can nullify it. Um, so that's a little, the slight advantage that I think this Gogeta has in terms of, at least you can give yourself a better chance to activate that. Um, the problem is, there's not that many units in the game that do melee-based right. supers, right? When you compare it to the key-based supers. The other thing as well, which is very dumb, is there's no way to confirm in game which enemies do melee based super attacks. Right? You might be going up against an enemy that does a melee based super attack, but you will never know unless you try, right? There should be a way, and we've talked about this before, um, you know, where you can like long tap on an enemy's uh, nameplate or their, their image to show you, like, oh, what, what kind of uh, buff effects or debuff effects that they currently have active on them. In that little area, it should show you what type of super attack the enemy is able to do, because now that they're implementing these effects that interact with the type of super attack the, the, uh, the enemy is going to be doing, you need to be able to understand what kind of super attack they're doing. You can't just have them all memorized. There's thousands of units in this game and characters in this game. You can't ex be expected to memorize every single enemy's super attack fa fa type, right? Um, 
So that's one big weakness, I think, because if you're able to know, like, let's say, for example, you're going up against a unit that does a melee based super attack. If you're able to confirm that and you have the location of their super attack and this Gogeta is transformed, like you'll be able to nullify it because you know it's you know it's coming. So that is one thing I think that they uh, definitely could do a better job of. Also, additionally, uh, on top of that, with this Gogeta specifically, a lot of people I've seen are saying like, oh, you shouldn't be able to, or you, you, you just because he's able to nullify a super attack doesn't mean you want to like put him off rotation. The super attack's coming in slot three. I would disagree. I think if you know a melee super is coming in slot three, and that would mean you push this guy off rotation, I would gladly guaranteed take zero damage from a super attack and push this guy off rotation, then have him remain on rotation and eat a super attack, right? That's just yeah, me. that's right. Yeah, I agree with that. Yes. Yeah. Plus, he's also a rainbow orb changer, so I mean, it's not like he's a bat floater. He's going to help your rotations no matter where he is. Um, but uh, yeah, that is pretty much all I have to say about him without using him, because again, I have no experience using this character. But for me, he seems pretty powerful. He is definitely, definitely powerful. The problem is just that, yeah, he doesn't counter or well, does nullify those combo super attacks like uh, in UI Goku in the Legendary Goku event, for example. That's not a melee super attack, so he doesn't right. nullify that. So ah man, they could have done a better job. So I rather take the high chance from Janemba without those yeah, conditions. I mean, but uh, that's how I feel personally. I, I I totally agree that the Janemba one is way better, just because there's more key based supers in the game, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, so there is Gogeta at number four. Now moving on to number three on the list, who is pretty much the counterpart to this Gogeta, who is the STR Super Vegito, who released last year during the Worldwide Celebration. Almost exactly one year old. Um, a little bit weird, I think, that um, you know they decided to go ahead and make this guy a little better than the Gogeta, even though it's pretty much they're released a year apart from each other. And I've seen a lot of people debating about, oh, do I like Gogeta better? Do I like Vegito better? And talking about this over on social media and YouTube comments. So this might be an area where a lot of people feel strongly one way or the other. Let us know down below. Do you like Gogeta better? Do you like Vegito better? And why? You can't just say, oh, I like Vegito better because he's Vegito. Like, just give us like an actual explanation as to why you like one better than the other. For us, um, at least looking at Vegito again, I have no personal experience using um, Gogeta, but I guess somebody can weigh in more on this end. I think his leader skill, Vegito's leader skill, is way better than Gogeta's yes. leader skill. Gogeta's yes, leader skill right. being time limit or connected hopes. Connected hopes did not need another leader so early. If this Gogeta had led movie heroes over connected hopes, this like this Gogeta would have had one of the best leader skills in the entire game. Um, sort of in line with this this Vegito. I think when you when you ask many people like, okay, who has the best leader skill in the game? One of the top answers you'll get is this STR Vegito because his leader skill is so ridiculous. Majin Buu Saga has like 100 million characters in it. Battle of Wits has a ton of characters in it that don't directly overlap with Majin Buu Saga. So it just gives you so many different options for that for that uh, that team. Um, and but then other than that, their sort of base form here is pretty similar. Not really much to say uh, which one is better than the other. I think if I'm looking at their passes, I kind of probably have to say I do like the Gogeta base form better. Just because of the rainbow key sphere changing. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, you're absolutely right. The SDR Goku and Vegeta doesn't have that. So, of course, um, Gogeta is better in that regard. But I really prefer the leader skill. So, I think they're pretty much the same here. Um, yeah, it's hard to decide which one is better. But the transformed state is what's interesting. Right, think? yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, they both transform on turn four. Right? And... Um, once you get them transformed, uh, Gogeta's powerful, but Vegito is like the single most damaging character in the entire game. Like, not even close, right? I mean, he's just mm -hmm. the counter. Mm -hmm. The fact that he has built-in crits in his passive, and he's countering, and he can see where super attacks are. Because a lot of times, people people's biggest complaint about this Vegito is that, oh, he can't tank, right? Or he's, you know, in these very difficult events like ESBR or the God Event he'll get destroyed. Well, guess what? You just don't put him where Super Tech is, right? And then you're, you're, you're good. He'll still take a little bit of damage from normals, right? It's not like he's invincible against normal attacks because he's still going to take a bit of damage, but you're not going to die if you play smart with him. So that ability to see where Super Attacks are in combination with the counters and the crits and just everything else, his links are crazy. Um, super Attack effects are really good. Raise Attack and Defense for one turn. 
um, in combination. Like, you guys have to understand that every time you counter an attack, so let's just say you put him in slot one. Every time you counter an attack, that counts as an attack that will factor into the chance to perform an additional via the hidden potential system. Mm -hmm. So if you put him in slot one and you're countering like four times and you're attacking, like the chances that you activate that additional super is very, very high or just additional attack from the hidden potential system. So you can get, you know, potentially two stacks of his defense from his super attack effects very often. And that will allow him to tank a lot more easily in that first slot if you want to put him there. But um, just looking at what he's able to do overall, I think in terms of offensive power, this Vegito blows away Gogeta. Like, it's not even close at all. Yes. Um, but defensively, that's that's another story, right? Yeah, right. What I absolutely love is, like, that you can actually trigger their active skill first when you're, like, in an event like Extreme Super Battle Royale or the God event, and then you can trigger Gogeta's active skill next, and then you have both of them on rotation. Let's say STR Vegito in the second slot, Gogeta's in the first slot, tanking all those hits, with his damage reduction, um, really, really powerful rotation. Maybe you're lucky and get those um, melee-based super attacks in the first slot after Gogeta attacked. So, um, yeah, very, very powerful. Probably the, the best rotation in the entire game, as I said before. Yeah, deserving number three, but yeah, there are a lot of people who say, like, um, he should be on number two. So, yeah, we will talk about this in a second, I guess. Yeah, as always, there's usually, you know, between the number, like, all the spots that are directly next to each other, there's always people who think maybe this guy should move moved up one slot or move down one slot. So we'll just go on to the top two, who you guys pretty much should understand at this point. Number two at this point is uh, LR, Int Evolution Blue Vegeta, mm -hmm. who came out in the sixth anniversary. Um, so I'll let, you, I'll let you handle this one. What, what are your overall thoughts on Vegeta and, and why is he deserving of number two? Okay, so what I actually love about Vegeta that he is a defensive wall. He already has like the, this 10% damage reduction every time he gets hit. He gets another 10% up to 30%. Um, that's very good. So he can tank very, very well. He's very consistent with that. He does a lot of damage and he has this high chance to crit. When, whenever he does an additional super attack, which is built into his skills, um, it gets a guaranteed crit that's very powerful. Then you have the revival mechanic. All of that built into one character. That's actually crazy. That's something Vegito or, well, STR Goku and Vegeta cannot do. All of that stuff. That's that's insane. Um, I, I love it. I love it. And his, his final explosion, well, it's... Yeah, you won't see it too often. But it's an AoE, it does a lot of damage, it counts as an attack, so he gets, um, he gets that key, additional key. Uh, yeah, one final thing I would say that he could actually compete with number one if Akatsuki built him like uh, whenever he got hit, he gets one key or yeah, maybe slight adjustments to the kit. Truth talks about that a lot, um, but still, um, he's, he's great because of all that I just said. Yeah, I would actually say that I actually see his final explosion fairly often. The one thing that mm -hmm. I will add, though, is that I don't see it often against multiple enemies, right? Mm -hmm. if you're going into Super Battle Road, you have his AoE active skill. By the time you get that active, at least most of the time in my experience, obviously, if you if you don't have, like, rainbow teams or 55% teams, stuff like that, you'll see this more often, I guess. But um, most of the time, you get it off, it's one, only one enemy left, or, or maybe two enemies left. Yeah. Yeah. So... It's just it being an AOE. I would have preferred because if you compare this guy's active skill to the active skill of the unit in number one, this does not hit as hard as that guy's active skill because um, it does Mega Colossal and then that's it. That, that, that's all it does. It doesn't doesn't do ultimate damage. Doesn't raise your attack at all. Um, it does hit hard still, right? It's still it's still LR Vegeta's final explosion. It's still gonna hit hard as an active skill, you know, attack. But. Um, it being an AoE, I think, actually hurts it more than it helps because you're not really going to be able to get that off against multiple enemies a lot of, a lot of the time. Um, one thing I will say about this Vegeta that I've, I've used him at this point pretty extensively with the 60th anniversary being on Global right now. The biggest thing that has impressed me the most about this Vegeta is his revival skill. I have gotten this revival skill like 20 plus times at this point going through difficult content. It happens very, very often. If you put this Vegeta in a situation where he can get hit and activate his active skill condition, you know, he gets to hit seven times. Um, it's not that hard to do, especially when you're going up against these difficult pieces of content that the enemy's attacking like a hundred times per turn. You can get that active skill condition fulfilled in like two turns. 
right? So on like turn four, turn five, turn six, you'll be able to get that active skill off, assuming you're in a position below 50% HP so you can get it uh, activated. I have had that active skill, or not active skill, the revival skill, sorry, uh, condition fulfilled and, you know, activated tons of times. That saved me, you know, didn't have to use items, didn't have to worry about dying. Um, it's just crazy, crazy powerful, that revival skill. So that is the one area of this Vegeta that has impressed me the most. Obviously, his damage can be really, really powerful. His defense can be good. The one downside to his defense, though, is if you put him in a position where he's going to tank a lot of attacks and then he gets, like, supered in that first attack before he's able to build up his damage reduction, he can get pelted very, very badly. Um, you know, taking him into type neutral god event. There's the uh, video I, I recorded a few days ago where the enemy was attacking, like, 100 times in slot 1 and 100 times in slot 3 and then once in slot 2. And I'm like, okay, I'll put Vegeta in slot two. Well, guess what the enemy supered in slot two? <laughs> and guess how much damage he took? Like 500k. <laughs> so there's instances where you can get unlucky like that um, because he doesn't have his, his damage reduction built up. But um, he's definitely very, very powerful, both offensively and uh, defensively. Yeah. So, so yeah, again, for, for us, the debate, SCR Vegito versus Blue Evolution Vegeta is, is settled because Vegeta can revive and Vegito cannot. So... Yeah, I think, I mean, line. there's definitely pros and cons to both, right? I mean, I, I wouldn't argue against somebody saying that they like Vegito better because undoubtedly he's going to be doing more damage than this Vegito. There's no there's no debating that. Vegito mm -hmm. straight up just does more damage than Vegito. No question. Yep. Um, I just think there's other at, uh, facets of this guy's kit, this Vegito's kit, that is, are able to make him more, use, more usable, more versatile, more flexible than the Vegito is. Yep. Um, and so that's why he's our number two pick here. Okay, moving on to number one. I'm pretty sure this is self-explanatory at this point, but we have <laughs> A-G-L-L-R-U-I Goku, who uh, I mentioned the sort of seesaw analogy earlier where, you know, they tend to buff defense on a unit, their attack goes down. They buff attack on a unit, their defense has to go down a little bit. So they always have some kind of balance going on with the how a unit is, is designed. I feel like this unit in particular is the biggest offender of just breaking that entire rule. Because... 70% chance to dodge. Even if he doesn't dodge at all, his defense is still good. And he's doing crazy amounts of damage. Like, there's turns that I've had with this guy. Triple crit super attacks that are doing like 5 million plus attacks that's every single time. Like, it comes to a point where it's fairly obvious just from using him that he's number one right I, i'm sure you've experienced that as well yeah absolutely absolutely so uh, attack and defense up 150 percent and a great chance to dodge 70 percent as garage said um if he dodges the first attack he gets an additional 30 percent defense well if you if you put him in the first slot he doesn't dodge the first attack and that's one that one is a super of course he gets destroyed that's that happens sometimes but man, how often does it happen? And yeah, whenever he gets hit, um, you're building towards that revival skill because he has to get hit three times. That's that's not much, um, but yeah, you have to balance it out because of his uh, evasion mechanic. Yeah, I, I think he has the whole package, man. And I'm I'm scared of the worldwide celebration because Akatsuki has to talk that now. Um, <laughs> I think. And what are they going to do? I'm really happy, actually, that he is the best unit in the game because Vegito and Gogeta, they they aged very, very fast, in my opinion, because of their pre-transformed state, but that's a whole other story. Um, yeah. Long story short, this is the most powerful unit in the game. Hands down. I think one factor that people don't remember, too, about this guy is the key that he gets whenever he evades because mm -hmm. there's been instances where, you know, you enter Super Battle Road, again, turn one, your rotations aren't necessarily the best, and uh, this guy, turn one, isn't able to do his Ultra Super Attack, but you have enough, you know, key built up to do, like, I don't know, maybe like a 12, 13, 14 key super. If the enemy is attacking you enough times in the front slot, you can build up the key to, to Ultra Super there pretty easily. Um, so even if you get unlucky in slot one, you can get that off. And then uh, so just to go off of something you mentioned earlier with his uh, revival mechanic, I think it is definitely harder to get this guy's revival mechanic than Vegeta, which I've definitely yeah, noticed. 100%. Yeah. Um, but the ability, like, if you don't get this guy's revival off, that just means he's dodged a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, so you're avoiding damage via his dodging, or you're going to be able to take a lot of damage with him, and then you're just going to be able to revive. So... I think it's kind of like a give and take scenario with that. Um, but I think his active skill is another area where I actually do like his active better than Vegeta's. I think I talked about this a little bit earlier too. Mm -hmm. um, 
Goku's active skill is not an AoE, but it does hit significantly harder than Vegeta's on a single target enemy because it greatly raises attack and causes ultimate damage, whereas Vegeta's just as mega colossal with his uh, active skill. Right. Right. So his active skill is going to hit harder. I do think the one area we didn't really talk about that much with these two anniversary LRs is the leader skill. I do think I kind of like Vegeta's leader skill a little better. Um, the reps of Universe 7 team is definitely way stronger, so them both leading that category is, is fine. I think that's, that's, a good, that's a good portion of leader skill. Miraculous Awakening as a Link, or not as a Link, as a, as a as leader skill, I feel like isn't great. Just like taking a look at the team. Yes. Um, powerful comeback, I would also say also is not that great, but I think it is better than Miraculous Awakening. So, oh, leader yeah, skill, for sure. yeah. yeah, leader skill I would give to Vegeta. And the final thing I do want to talk about, because again, when you're talking about UI Goku, a lot of people directly compare him to Vegeta. His Link set I do like better than Vegeta's. The fact that he has Shocking Speed, Prepare for Battle, and Turn of Power, those three major key links. Mm -hmm. He will almost always be fine key-wise, whereas Vegeta, um, <clears throat> take a look at what his links are. They were play like they gave him as one of his major key links the Royal Lineage link. So it's Royal Lineage, Perfect Battle, and Turn of Power. So you're talking about Royal Lineage pretty much versus Shocking Speed. I would much rather take Shocking Speed almost every single time because Royal Lineage at level 10 has two key. But Royal Lineage is literally just other Vegetas and other Trunkses, and that's it. Those, that's the only, those are the only units in the game that really have that link. So it's kind of way more restrictive than Shocking Speed. And if you take a look at the team that he wants to be used on. Well, both these units wants to be wants to want to be used on the uh, Universe Seven team. You know, the the, the uh, Universe Survival Saga team to get that Turner of Power link active. A lot of units on those teams have shocking speed. I think like Tech Jiren has shocking speed. So if Tech Jiren uh, and this Vegeta are linked together, imagine if this Vegeta had shocking speed. He would be such a good partner for that Jiren. But the loss of that Tsuki, I think, does hurt him a little bit. So I think overall the links on UI Goku are better. Um, he's on less categories than Vegeta, but I, I don't really... He's still on a decent amount. He's still on like nine teams. So I think that's good enough. <laughs> but, but yeah, Gor Gorosh is absolutely right. Um... I personally say every time that AJ Yue Goku is the quote unquote faster unit because he builds up key so fast while Vegeta has to attack first and also get the key. Um, that what splits them apart by a lot, uh, I think. Um, as I said before, I would have liked if Vegeta gets key whenever he gets hit, but well, that didn't happen. And also, Vegeta doesn't have Super Saiyan, I don't know why. Uh, yeah. Akatsuki being Akatsuki, I guess, but um, yeah, what are you gonna do? Uh, Vegeta's still number two, rightfully so, and uh, UI Goku is number one by a long shot. Yep. And then uh, soon to be number one is going to be best unit in the game, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, right? That's coming up. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, I, as I said, I'm scared. I don't know what he's gonna do, man. He's gonna, he's gonna nullify all types of supers. 100% chance. 100% chance, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> slow down, slow down, Goresh. <laughs> Alright, there is our top 10 LR list. Again, just to sort of recap everything. Honorable mention was Physical, Angel, Super Saiyan 2, Vegeta. Number 10 was Physical, Blue, Vegeta, and Goku. Number 9 was Tech, Full Power, Jiren. Number 8 was STR, UI, Goku. Number 7 was STR, Team Turles. Number 6 was Physical, Boo Tanks. Number 5 was Physical, Super, Janemba. Number four was Tech Super Gogeta. Number three was STR Super Vegito. And the number two was Int Evolution Blue Vegeta, with number one being LR AGL UI Goku. This list did not include any EZA summonable LRs. Mm -hmm. And um, these units were all re uh, represented at rainbow full level 10 links as to their placements here. So let us know down below after knowing what the full list is. Do you guys agree with our placements? disagree with our placements and how would you change the list to suit what you've experienced in the game um sort of tailored to how you view these rankings here we're open to discussion um obviously these are all subject to uh scrutiny so l let a rip let us know what you think but uh, that this has been the 59 gaming top 10 summonable lr tier list this is gorash joined by sunblade and uh with that said hope you guys enjoyed the video see you all in the next one Bye bye Thank you.